Okay, thank you and thank you for the organizers for the nice uh, conference and giving me the opportunity to present here. So uh, I'm going to talk you, to tell you about uh, uh, works that we developed in collaboration with Eric Santoya, Luis Garay, and Eduardo Martin Martinez uh, that we published like I don't know one year ago or something, and now we have continued with something so work in progress that the final preliminary result I'm going to present we obtained it uh, last week. So, uh, but what is the motivation of all of this? So we uh, uh, started thinking about time machines. <laughs> so we were, wanted to study uh, limiting cases uh, and see if we can understand uh, a little bit better and if we can develop some quantum field theory in this kind of space times. And then we thought uh, how to construct these time machines uh, from traversable wormholes. And in fact, there are some previous uh, work some years ago by uh, Novikov and Frolov, where they say that in the moment that you have uh, some matter fields in this uh, space times of uh, traversable workers, they immediately develop time machines. So it was like, okay, let's try to understand. As I read here, there are different proposals of how you can construct these time machines. I'm going to focus here in a particular uh, one and not the most, uh, if you are familiar with the topic, it's not the most uh, standard in the, in the literature. But in any case, all of them have the same property of having uh, close time-like curves. Depending on the proposal, you have the time-like curves uh, only in beyond some horizon or in an early stage. Or, but in any case, you will have some regions with these uh, close time-like uh, curves. And also, this has been uh, a study I read here, although I'm not going to focus uh, in this talk. Uh, in trying to study the stability of these time machines using uh, focusing in the stability of the of the Cauchy horizons. So uh, here what I'm going to do is explain what, uh, how do we do here uh, quantum field theory. And in order to do that, uh, as the geometry is multiply connected, we are going to use uh, some techniques of the covering spaces that will allow us to, to fully define the, the quantum field theory properly in, in a region that we are interested in. And in the last part, uh, just to get uh, more information uh, about uh, how some local uh, observer or some uno de with detector could measure maybe the presence of these uh, regions with uh, uh, close time like course of this uh, non trivial topology. Um, so, so the idea is like if uh, using these uh, detectors, we can realize of this, or they don't detect the difference to make it uh, clear. So this is the summary of the idea and the work. And let me uh, first, in the first slide, to present you the model, what we have uh, constructed, and to have a clear picture, and then I will enter into the results of the uh, detectors. So for the sake of simplicity, because we have a much better techniques uh, and uh, easier, uh, to, it's easier to compute everything. We focus in the case of one plus one. So if you think in the simple case of a one plus one workhole, it's like having a strip and identify the two extreme ports. So this is the concept of a workhole that if you realize that uh, in the moment that you identify that two points, you also have a workhole, but this is exactly a nice thing cylinder. So when uh, this kind of workhole is converted into a time machine, so the idea is when this uh, topological identification of the ends of the strips is not performed at the same time. If you do this uh, topological identification at different times, then what you get is a time machine. So this is the extremely simple model that, that we consider. In terms of a uh, metric, we choose here a particular uh, simple case of the metric, but as we are in one plus one, they are uh, the rest of the cases are only differentiated by a conformal factor that are not uh, is not influencing in the general result of the topology. So uh, this is the metric that we are using in terms of this uh, W, and this W is uh, in terms of two parameters. That this is these are going to be the parameters that we are going to play all the rest of the talk. So this W is terms in the in a logarithm of A over L. 
Uh, and, yeah, and remember that here I'm still in a simply connected uh, space time. So this is the before performing the identification. And it's what I'm going to call M. So oh, during the whole talk, all the variables that I define with uh, no bar are because are in the simply connected manifold. And the ones with the bar are in the multiply connected one. So in the time machine one. OK, so this is a, a static simply connected. So I have a unique global time like a killing vector field. I know how to do uh, my quantum field theory here. And I have this uh, W that is related to the curvature, as you may see here. How, when I construct the time machine from here, what I could have to do, as I previously uh, told you, is to identify points in this M. And to identify that points, I uh, make use of these uh, constants that I defined before, that I assume to be positive without any loss of generality. So L is greater than zero, and A is uh, greater or equal than one. And all this identification is based in this equivalent Relation that is uh, what is uh, giving us now the multiple connectedness character of the time machine. So, as you see, this parameter A is telling you the difference in times when you perform the identification on this strip. So, in some way, it's giving you the strength of the time machine when you identify. And that's the reason it's equal or greater than one, because you see, when A is equal to one, you are identifying at the same time. And you have directly the uh, Einstein ceiling. And L is directly the length of the strip or the cylinder. So these are the uh, two uh, parameters. And this is the equivalence uh, relation that uh, will give us uh, the cosine space that is this M bar. And I will explain you now how to compute the things. But before, OK, this is what I mentioned before. A is what I call the work parameter, the strength of the time machine. And when it's greater than zero, we have uh, the things identified at a different time. And is when we have CTCs. No, we have the CTCs not uh, in, all, in the whole space time. We have uh, two uh, new Cauchy horizons, future and past, and the uh, um, uh, close time like curves are placed beyond these two horizons. And the limiting case where A goes to one, as you see here, W goes to zero. We have the case with no curvature. And we, the, we have the wormhole model, the Einstein cylinder, in this uh, case of uh, 1 plus 1. OK. <laughs> I have to speed up. OK, so just to make it clear, this is the multiply connected. Uh, that is the cosine of space of this simply connected by the fundamental group that is defined by this equivalence relation. OK? And so this simply connected is the universal cover of this one. And in this universal cover, we don't we know how to do this, uh, how to develop our quantum field theory. So because it has a global killing vector, we can define everything. Perfect. Now we use the uh, action of the group that is defined by that equivalent relation to take uh, the definitions of our fields in the covering space and um, move them to the uh, M bar space time. And here, um, just to give a visual idea of what is this, uh, first is to uh, point out that this M, this simply connected space, that is the covering space, is in fact the point carry patch of 8 minus 2. And this uh, W is related to the uh, length scale of this ADS2, as you see by this change. So this is the uh, complete uh, point carry patch of AD, ADS2. And is where we perform uh, our quantization of the field. The fact is that when we develop the, um, uh, the identification, and as I told you, we have regions with CTCs that we had not before, what happens is that this uh, we have this uh, shape diamond here that provides two new uh, Cauchy horizons, these bifurcated Cauchy horizons. And these regions are the ones uh, where we have uh, uh, CTCs, and this region is the one having no CTCs. And this is in terms of the node coordinates that I'm using. But the important uh, visual part is to know that this is the diamond, 
to which we restrict now when we calculate the white man function and all the superintendent functions that we want to calculate. Even the quantization is developed in the whole part. It's the uh, covering the space. Okay. Um, what I said, uh, uh, um, no, I, I mentioned it later. So uh, let me briefly comment about the Whiteman function. So this is the uh, general expression, and we can separate it in terms of the anti-commutator and commutator uh, defined it by C plus or and C minus. And uh, I don't want to bore you with the whole expression of it, but the, just to say briefly that in the time machine, we can split the C minus is only one term, but the C plus is C0 plus, C1, and C2 plus. And I wanted to make this split here because we are interested in the limit when A goes to one uh, that we have defined it by one plus uh, delta to play with this delta play going to zero for the rest of the talk. That this is the limit of the Einstein cylinder. And in this case, uh, these uh, two point functions go directly to the uh, ones of the uh, Einstein cylinder and in fact, defining, uh, selecting a particular state for the zero mode. That was a, a result that we found in the previous paper, how this deformation of the Einstein cylinder are fixing a state for solving the ambiguity of the zero mode. What I'm going to do here is to uh, introduce uh, now this uh, the with detector. In fact, I'm going to go directly to the derivative problem because then we can compare uh, all the different uh, Minkowski and uh, Einstein cylinder and ADS2 without having problems of the uh, uh, infrared divergence. So uh, this is the interaction Hamiltonian where we have the detector uh, monopole operator coupled linearly with the proper time derivative of the field via this coupling constant. And this is the switching factor for the detector. So we go to a leading order on perturbation theory, and we uh, are interested in computing this uh, transition probability uh, in terms of the uh, A, that is the derivative of the Weinman function. So, um, and of course, uh, as I said before, all these uh, two point functions are computed just in the diamond where we have no uh, CTCs. So, is to say that all the regions uh, with time machines are placed beyond the horizon, so we have not the access to them because we don't know how to do things there. Okay, so we will mention that the trajectory that, for that reason, the trajectory that we choose for the detector is a trajectory that never goes near the Cochi horizons and is always placed in the region where we are safe of these time machines. And, uh, and then we consider a Gaussian. Uh, switching of the detector in terms of this uh, T that maybe is uh, relevant for, for the relevant for the next lecture. So what are our preliminary uh, results of ideas? So we want to compare, as I said, this um, Goski Einstein cylinder, the covering that is the ADS2 and the point uh, and the time machine. Uh, studying the limit when this curvature goes to zero. As you remember, this W is defined by the, the two parameters, the A, that is the strength of the time machine, and L, the length. So we can uh, uh, reach this limit, keeping L fixed, and allowing this delta to be very small, or leaving this uh, delta fixed and go for a very large L. And we uh, took this uh, notation from a paper in this topic by Roberto Empara. Um, so these are uh, the results that we get with the transition probability in terms of this L. This is uh, not the capital L because it's just because we divide for the T, uh, capital T in order to do a dimensional quantity, but for our purpose, take here the capital L, so the length. So this is the detector response uh, in the different uh, space times as a function of the circumference L of the length of the strip, but keeping fixed the curvature. So what we see here is that when we have, uh, when 
when we have a greater L, the uh, time machine uh, response, the, 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 the detector of the response in the time machine space time goes very near, this is here, amplify the graphic, to the ADS. So they are more or less undistinguishable. But when we are at very uh, a small L, they uh, this uh, time machine res the response in the time machine in space time uh, goes closer to the uh, cylinder, the icing cylinder. As you see in this case, they are not equal because we have fixed the curvature. So and we have fixed the curvature to be the ADS curvature equal to the time machine curvature. So that's the reason here they coincide, but it cannot coincide with the cylinder. So what is the what this graphic shows? is that the detector placed in the time machine can differentiate the topology of the space-time. Because here we have the curvature fixed, but for small l's, it can differentiate between this uh, ADS covering the space and the time machine. Um, the other way, the other limited that I, I mentioned to you, that was a uh, 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 the measuring the detector response as a function of the curvature, but here keeping uh, constant the length. So in this case, uh, we choose the length uh, to be equal in the Einstein cylindrical in the time machine. So for weak, uh, for small curvature, they <clears throat> coincide for zero, <laughs> and uh, for uh, great uh, for greater curvature, again, it recovers the uh, same behavior that ADS. So it's only for uh, a small curvature when we our detector can differentiate the, the presence of uh, the CTC beyond the horizon and the topology, topological difference between this ADS uh, space-time and the time machine space-time. And this is more or less the status uh, right now of the uh, detector uh, study. And I hope to have more results soon. Thanks. So we have time for a couple of questions. I may have misunderstood some points, but you're measuring all this in, in the, the vacuum state of this particular space time that you're probing, right? So, but when you're doing this experiment, you don't know what state you're going to be in. So in, in practice, I don't think you can say, well, I can differentiate with this measurement between the topology of your space times. You just differentiate these states locally, but you would need to do the, space, the measurement everywhere to know if it's if it's if you're actually probing the vacuum state, or am I seeing this wrong? Mm, I I'm not sure if I understand what what's the your point there. I mean, you're calculating these in in different states, so you're calculating. I mean, locally, these are different. Uh, on on the patch where you're doing the measurement, so to say. But it's it's the same patch. What I'm doing. Yes, but. The vacuum state of, diff of different space times. Uh, because no, in the EDS uh, case and the time machine that, that are the ones that are com I'm, I'm comparing, there is the same. But still, you're making different measurements. So, how, how can the state be the same? I'm di making different measures? What no, you're, me well, you're measuring different. Uh, you are probing the vacuum state of that particular space time, right? That I understood correctly, or? This is the, here, you mean, this yes. is the detector response in yes. a particular trajectory? Yes. In the, in this, in, in this space. In, okay, and the same trajectory here. Yeah, in its, in its respective vacuum states. Yes, but I'm considering here the same. That's the reason I'm saying that this, uh, this difference is reflecting the topological difference of one space time and the other. Okay, maybe then I've misunderstood some points, but uh, maybe we can okay, we'll later. Later. Uh, And there was your step for one more quick question. I remember I saw your mother, so that's we're gonna end with that one.
Thank you, very nice. Um, it seems that the diamond in, um, in, in which you do the quotient and you have no closed time like loops, it seems that there's a finite amount of proper time available there. So it's finite amount of proper time available there. Yeah. Your switching was a Gaussian. Do you put a hard cutoff on that Gaussian somewhere? Yes. In you mean here that I cut the proper time to not do you refer to that because I don't want to be close to the uh, Cauchy surface. Yeah. So how how sharp is that? How how small is that switching when you do the cutoff? Uh, that's a good question, but I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't know how to answer you. Yeah, yeah, it's normalized to T. So yes, that's the reason. Means that, that curvature is about a hundred times full. So yeah, this is this is yeah that this is normalized. This the W normalized over this T. That is the thing that I right. skipped. Okay. So the times are much longer yes. actually for that one. So yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I have to think exactly how much is. I don't know. No, I have to think about it. And Jorma has a point for those regimes. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's thank Anna again.